Merry Meet. I'm so happy you've joined us today. We are on our live stream, and today I would like to talk about the topic of divine design. It's um, it's an interesting topic, and sometimes it can be misused. So I'd like to to, to talk about what we're what we mean by the divine design. Uh, if you think about infinite intelligence, that's one of the qualities of spirit. Infinite intelligence uh, is the intelligence of the universe that that enables um, babies to grow out of embryos, to to have forests grow out of acorns, to have um, planets revolve around a central sun, and and all of the all of the the, the scientific mysteries that that the scient- that the scientists will be uncovering forever because it's infinite. The it's infinite the amount of of uh, mysteries that are are um, available to be revealed by science because of infinite intelligence. And what we've noticed, and and scientists have noticed this too, is if it's something's true for one thing, it's true for everything. Right? So so in 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 our in our atmosphere here on Earth, if gravity is true for one thing, it's true for everything. Now, gravity may may have a different effect on 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 certain things because of uh, of mass and weight and things like that. But gravity, um, but gravity is something that that affects every single thing on this planet. So, uh, the same thing is true of. Uh, of, of any infinite principle. If, if, it's, if it's true for one thing, it's true for everything. So it wouldn't be that, that there's a divine design for an atom and a divine design for the body of a bird and a divine design for the, for the ecosystem of a planet. But you are chaos and you are random. Okay? It wouldn't make sense that, um, that there's a function for a hand, and that there's a function for an for an, uh, a spider, where they they fit into an ecosystem in in a particular way. There's a function for a leaf. There's a function for a piece of fruit. There's a function, and there's more than one, but there's a, there's there's definite functions for for everything. But you have no function. You you're the you're the one outlier. Um, that's the the that's the what we talk about the ego here a lot. The ego makes up a lot of stories that that make no sense if you really look at them. <laughs> you just kind of considered them and you just kind of looked looked at them logically. A lot of the, what the ego's stories are make absolutely no sense. Anytime the ego wants to tell you that that you're um, that you're a nothing, that that you don't matter, that you're insignificant, you think if you look at that realistically and you didn't get hypnotized emotionally by what the ego is trying to tell you, it wouldn't make sense, would it? Why would that be true? Why would, why would I be the one thing, the one outlier on the entire planet that has absolutely no function, that has absolutely no use, that has absolutely no purpose, right? So that's the, that's the issue is that the, the ego mind has created a false sense of sight, Using our physical, uh, well, actually, we could say a false sense of of of, uh, of understanding of reality based on our physical senses. But let's just use sight. With with the ego's, the way the ego uses the the, the uh, sense of sight is it decides what something is, and then what you see isn't what is there. It's what the ego mind projects onto what you see. Does that make sense? So you can look out into the world and you can say, oh, no, no, I know what that is. I know that's a, that's a clock and that's there to tell time and that's a chair and that's there to sit, to sit in and that's a, you know, that's a, that's a cell phone and that's there to, to call people or go online or, or to text. I know what things are. I know what things mean, but that's not true. That's not true. You don't know. You think you know. Because the ego's already told you what that is going to be before you even see it. Now, maybe that, is, that cell phone is for the purpose of calling people, but the ego doesn't know why you'd want to call them. The ego doesn't understand why you didn't want to make that phone call, right? But according to the ego, you, that, that, you, you'd only want to call people in order to reinforce 
its agenda of separation from your good, right? So the ego has all these stories and then it, it, it projects those stories onto everything you see. And then you think you see the world as it is, but you don't. But we do not see the world as it is. We see the world as the ego wants us to see the world because we don't bother to question it. All right. So, um, and and if you have, and, and again, with the divine design, we color everything based on what we've decided it's going to be. And rarely, rarely does a person make it through the training of this world and come out the other end thinking, there's a divine design for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a divine design for me in my life and and I'm here to 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 fulfill a divine function and all things now um manifest for me in order in order for that function to be fulfilled. We don't see the world that way. We don't. We're not taught to see the world that way. So it does doesn't it make sense that that's not the reality that we experience? Because we are powerful. We are very, very powerful people, and we were imbued with the same creative pr- properties as our creator. And it doesn't matter what you call that creator. You can call it God, you can call it goddess, you can call it infinite spirit, you can call it infinite intelligence, you can call it anything you want. But it, you were created in its image and likeness, and you were created to have all power and dominion over this world. That's true. That's, that's, the, that's the inspired ancient teaching, no matter what religion you come from. And, and, but we don't see things that way. We're not trained to see things that way. When we are, are come into this world, we are put, we, they put a pair of glasses on us, basically, and they train us to see things in a specific way. And that specific way is the opposite of the truth the opposite of the truth. Nobody, well, rarely are you trained by this world that, that there's a divine design, that, that you have a divine function to fulfill, that your purpose here is holy, that you are necessary, that you are essential. You are essential. You are an essential part of this world. Okay? So, now it's up to us. It's up to us to recognize that we, that we have um, bought a mistaken view of reality and that we are willing and, and, and desirous of being shown the truth instead. And again, nothing happens unbidden in this world. The, the universe doesn't come in and just change things for us because we have free will. We have free will to think, to use our minds any way we want to. And so, um, until we've decided that we want to see things truly, we will continue to, to make things up the way that we've been taught to make things up. But if we start to consider, wait a minute, let's just, let's just reason this out. If there is a divine design for everything, if everything obviously is designed by infinite intelligence, then I know that I can't be so special as to be the one thing without that. So I know I have a divine design that makes, just makes sense. It just makes sense. So if there is a conspiracy, people that are into these conspiracy theories, the only real conspiracy is that of the ego, that that it's conspired to keep me thinking along the lines of a lie rather than looking at the world as it really is. So I'm experiencing like a holograph. <clears throat> we all are. We're experiencing a holograph. And so we've already decided what this world is going to be. And then we look on it and then we're right on, on, on one, one level or another. So what we're, what we're saying is in magic is that we can look at the world and since it's a holograph, we can have it be how we want it to be. But that can also be a further trap entrapment by our ego because when the ego gets a hold of the idea of magic, it says, well, good, I can, have, I can, I can use magic as a way to, to stay stuck in my illusion. I can, I can use magic as a way to prove that I have no function, as no, that I, you know, and then we can stay distracted by all kinds of weird little goals that, make, that, that have absolutely no, um, uh, that have no basis in, in our function our divine design. So we can get, we can stay stuck and I'm going to do a love spell because I want that person. I want to do a money spell because I want that thing. I'm going to do a car spell because I want that car. And we can, we can stay very, very busy with magic, getting things 
and and luckily uh, for us though the ego has a has an agenda that's that's called seek and, and do not find so a lot, uh, eventually we get disappointed with our magic if we use it a- according to the ego because usually the the ego is at at uh, at best, giving us something that's going to disappoint us, and at worst, uh, dangling a carrot in front of our eyes for something that's never going to be obtainable. So, so, so when 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 we get get the idea of magic in our heads, and we haven't and we haven't decided that we want to see things as God sees things versus the way, or as spirit sees things versus the way our ego sees things, um, then then magic is just another tool. To, to reinforce our separation. The ego can use whatever it wants, right? But luckily for us, so can spirit. Spirit can use anything. Spirit can use anything. And a good thing for spirit to use is magic because magic is, 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 is getting closer to the truth. So that's, the, that's why we sometimes in, in the craft, we have the differentiation between high magic and low magic. If you think of high magic as, as, as um, altering our universe so that it conforms to the divine design versus low magic is altering the universe so that it, it conforms to my personal will. Right, so low magic in some of my older lectures was called um, al- uh, sorcery, and high magic was called alchemy. But however, you want it didn't matter what the terms are that that are comfortable for you. But you rec- recognize that just like within the world, I can see things through the eyes of the ego, or I can see through the things through the eyes of spirit. Um, I can I can use magic from the point of view of the ego, or I can use magic from the point of view of spirit. Well, we want to use magic from the point of view of spirit in regards to what we're talking about today because we want to replace our vision of the world with the divine design because what we have to come to understand, and and the only way to come to understand it is to go through our own personal initiations, is that that the uh, that infinite spirit has a plan for us has a design for us we we are just as functional as a hand is functional we are just as functional as as um, as as a tree is functional we have a purpose we have probably more than one purpose and and as um, children of the infinite we have to understand that we are extensions of the infinite. Just like we say, like a like a sunbeam is to the sun, we are constantly shining as as extensions of a of, of a supreme soul, right? So we each of our individual souls are just emanations of something even greater. And uh, of course, we don't see things that way here. But but imagine that 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 sunbeam, all its function is is to shine, but it shines in a very unique, specific way. So when that sunbeam is manifest as through through a body and through a, a, a set of circumstances and through a through a timeline here on the planet, it can be one of two things. It can be it can be an, an entrapped soul. That that is very confused and has no idea of what it's supposed to be here for, and so it's it's grasping at straws and trying to make sense of this world, or it can be that extension of 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 that that purity of spirit that's using that's moving through body this body and through this this set of circumstances and through this storyline very consciously in order to fulfill its function to fulfill its purpose. And you have a very unique purpose to fulfill. Everybody's purpose here is the same. It's to shine. It's to be the light in this world. But your way of shining, your, your, the, the way that you shine, the way that the, the, the circumstances that, that manifest, the, the people that, that, that can benefit most from your shining is very unique to you. And you'll notice that, that your storyline doesn't need to be changed so much as it needs to be, uh, it needs to be dedicated to this this spirit so that the divine design can move through your storyline right and then you'll notice that when you when you're doing magic to allow that divine design to manifest that some of the structures that you mistakenly got together um, that that don't serve you will go away but a lot of them are usable are still very usable so let's say you're um, uh, let's say you're a, a food server all right and and you just say well I want the divine design. 
I want the divine design of my life. Well, maybe you're supposed to be um, you're supposed to be in marketing. That's where well, that's where the the talents are for you, and that's where God really wants to use you because there's specific work that need to be done that none of us understand in the in the realm of marketing. So what 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 could happen? Well, one thing that could happen is you lose your job as a food server and you get a new job as a in in marketing, or you get an apprenticeship or something like that. That could happen, or maybe maybe for a while you are are are. Uh, um, uh, the universe is using your food service job as 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 a means through which this divine design starts to manifest. While you get a second job as as a, as an intern in this in this uh, marketing firm, so that you're working a couple jobs for a while. But that's the way it's manifesting. You don't know. You don't know. So when you're doing a spell from the point of view of the ego, you say, okay, I want a job and I want it to look like this and I want it to look like that and I want it to look like this and it has to have this much money. It needs to be at these hours. It needs to be blah, 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 blah. And, um, and, and then you do your spell. Well, now when you're doing a spell for the divine design, you can do the same thing. You can say, I want a job that's this, 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 and this, and I want it to be this, and I want it to be that. There's nothing wrong with having the same exact spell, but the way you the the way you implement the spell is absolutely diametrically opposed between the two. The one you're saying, if it's not like this, it didn't happen. The other one, if with the divine design, you just say this or something better according to the divine design. This is what I think I want. And so you've done your work. You've done your work. You haven't just said, okay, God, do it for me. You say, no, no, I think this is what I need to do. I've done my work. I want this job. But I also want the divine design of my life to manifest. Therefore, it's literally this or something better according to the divine design. And that way, you keep your mind open. You keep your mind open. And that way, when that marketing job comes, that you didn't even know you were supposed to be in marketing. You didn't even know that that was a thing. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, somebody says, you know, we, we have this thing, and I think you'd be really good for it. You should come. You should come intern. I think you would be great. I just really get this sense. Well, since you have your mind open, you're going and doing the divine design, Right? Whereas this, and, and you still may get that other job for temporarily, who knows? But this other one, when you're, when you're being sorcerous about it, you're saying, no, if it doesn't look like this job, then, uh, then it's not worked. And then my spell, spell was a failure. Um, it happens all the time. There was a, the, we, we see it in, um, with people that are in the performing arts. They, they, they want magic for, you know, for getting, uh, getting a part. And I say, okay, well, let's do a spell. And we'll get you. We'll get you a part. I mean, you you deserve that. So, if we say now, if if they are on um, on, on that sorceress path, which again, it's not bad. It's just you're, you're just you're just enmeshing yourself more in illusion. So you're just delaying your 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 progress longer. It's not that you're bad. If you don't get that, you know that one role on that that Netflix show that you that you're going out for you're upset or you are so like compelled that you're just that role that role that role that role well then you get that role and then you're say you're under contract and they you, you they've got this whole couple seasons and it's this small little role it doesn't pay that much it's a great upgrade from where you were yes but you're under contract you you've signed a contract for for like 3 seasons which means that you can't then go on this uh, this other role which was for a major fe- feature but it was but they're filming in Canada and they needed you in Canada for like a long period of time and you can't because you're under contract for this Netflix thing, which is such a small little role. But because you were so sorceress, you pushed and prodded and you got that role. And now you, 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 you're not available for, for the divine design. Now you'll learn your lesson and you'll do better next time, right? But if you had known to ask for the divine design, you could have done the spell for that role and had that hands-off approach so that when uh, when, when um, the manifestation started to occur, you had your mind open. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I'm getting the sense that, that, that this isn't the right thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait and see, you know? And then you would have gotten the right role. So the divine design is... is 180 degrees away from what you think you are. 
It's so important to recognize that. You can't trust yourself to know your own best interests. I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you, but you're not trustworthy when it comes to that. Not, not yet. You're not. Because if you were, you'd already be doing it. If you were, you'd already be doing it. Now, to say that you're not trustworthy is a high, high place to be. All that is, it's, it's, a, it's an act of supreme self-love to say, oh, I've got tendencies. This world trained me wrong. This world really trained me wrong. And I'm not going to rely on my own old training. There's an old, there's a, there's a, a thing in A Course in Miracles, which is such a handy little thing to memorize. It's when you're, when you're, when you're up against something and you don't know what to do, you just say, I don't know what anything, including this means. And so I do not know how to respond to it. And I will not use my own past learning as the light to guide me now. What that does is it, it's a hands-off approach. You just say, whoop, I don't know what this means. I don't know what anything means because of my own past conditioning. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm, 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 in, I'm coming from the point of view of, of honesty here that I was, I've been trained to see the world in, a, in an incorrect way. So I don't know what this is. So I don't know how to respond to it because I've been trained wrong, but I know that. So that I'm in a place of power. So I'm not going to use my own past training and learning and things that I was I've been taught or that I've taught myself. I'm not going to I'm not going to make choices based on that. No. What do I want instead? I want the divine design instead of this. I know God or goddess or spirit has a plan. And when we say plan, it's not like a plan in time. It's a plan like a like a um, like a tree has a plan. It has a plan from acorn to forest. There's a plan for the for the guiding of the of the of the earth around the sun. There's a plan for everything. So God has a plan for you because God created you. You did not create yourself. But every time that you start to believe the way you were taught, you think that it's your responsibility to know what you want. You think it's your responsibility to understand how to fix things. You think it's your responsibility to 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 make these big decisions, even though the world hasn't given you any data out of which you can make those decisions. Now, doesn't that seem silly? But look at it really honestly. Say you were in, say you had enrolled in a course in, I don't know, um, you, you enrolled in a course in, um, in, in distillery. Let's just say distillery. I just, Okay, so you so you so you got to so you you wanted to learn how to to uh, distill essential oils, right? And you'd never done it before, and you accidentally got into like the advanced course, and you went in there, and you're like, I guess I'm supposed to know what to do, and you started making stuff up. I mean, how how successful would you be? And you didn't know what you were doing. And nobody, nobody ever gave you any information about distillery, but somehow you were thrust in this advanced course in distillery and you knew you better get going and you still, so you just started doing stuff, you know, and, and, and then you wonder what the problem was and you feel bad about yourself that you weren't able to make a good distillation or that you had an accident or that there was an explosion or whatever right? Well, it's the same exact scenario here. You think you're supposed to know everything, but nobody's given you any data about it. And the data you have is wrong. Okay? So that's why we say, I don't know. I don't know anything, but there is a divine design. So I want the divine design I want to be shown. I want to be taught. I want to be led. I want the divine design instead of this. If you keep that top of mind um, at each and every decision, if you come into, whether it's magic or, or, or just in, in your interpersonal relationships or when you're confronted with anything, if you remind yourself at every turn, I don't know because the world taught me wrong. I don't know what this is. Everybody says they know what this is, but they don't know either. They don't know. But there is a divine design, and that divine design exists in a perception of the world that is different than the, than the eyes that I'm using. 
because I've been trained to see things in a certain way. And I want to see things in the right way. I want to see the way, I want to see things the way spirit sees things. So I want the divine design instead of this. Okay? It's that simple. I want the divine design instead of this. So whether you are, whether, like I said, whether, you, whether you're doing magic, whether you're just, whether you're just um, interacting uh, with your life, at every turn, when, there, when you don't know or when something doesn't feel right, or when you have any, any sense of distress, any sense of uh, upset, it doesn't matter if it's big or small. What that means is it's your mind trying to alert you to the fact that you don't know. And, and you need to take heed of that and, 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 and state it clearly. I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't know what to do about this. I don't know what any of it means. None of this makes sense to me. I don't know. But I do want the divine design instead of this. That I do know. And then you are giving permission. You are giving permission. You are giving your free will to align with the same exact power that's your creator to come in and show you the truth instead of that to show you the divine design of your life instead of, of, of the, the mistaken perception that you have. Well, I hope this was interesting for you, and I cannot wait to work with you again. And until that time, blessed be.